to Italy and welcome to Linear Rock. Thank you. So John and Chris, you're here in Bologna. We're about to play a gig which is very intense and rocky today. Yeah. The sun is shining and new album Magic Mountain is out now since three weeks. And uh, you recently stated that making it brought you back to the roots feeling. Uh, with a more freedom and confidence spirit. Can you explain that? Yeah, I mean, this album was, like, for us, this is this is an album that defines the sound of the Cherry you know what I mean? Like, we, uh, it's the first time in the history of the band, in the 13 years we've been a band, that it's the four of us, and only the four of us, we're in a room writing songs. We've always written with either John Fred's dad or producers that do our albums or just songwriters in general. And, you know, like, and, and in the early days, we, we needed the help, you know what I mean? Like, like we, could rock, we could rock our asses off but as far as writing songs. They were kind of teasy when we wrote you know? But uh, now we've, uh, we've developed into our own as songwriters and, and we've been very fortunate to, to have some success with other artists recording our songs back home. Uh, and, you know, for this record, it was kind of like just the, the, for the first time, the label was kind of like, go write a record that you love. You know, you, you guys know what your fans in Europe like. Maybe that'll catch on over here if you just do it the way you guys want to do it. And it, it was a very freeing experience, a very positive experience. Um, so, I mean, you know, this record, like I said, it's, 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 I love every record we've done. I'm very proud of it, but this is the one that kind of defines who we are as a band. And music and lyrics, I still a collective effort, uh, or this time you had more distinctive roles it's, during composition? No, it, it, it's still all four of us, there's not as many like people putting their hands in it outside okay. of it, you know what I mean? From the, from the business aspect, <laughs> from the record label, and you know, management, even us, yeah, when you form a band, what happens is, you know, you're young, and, you know, you, you you think you need direction, and you probably do. So you get like all these people telling you, like, "Oh, you gotta sound like this, you gotta look yeah. like this." But we never really paid much attention to the look part because we're just southern it's hillbillies, and it's like we're we'll dressed like exactly how we walk yeah. on stage today. But as far as the music, we have you know different producers you know work with us and stuff, and that's great because we learned a lot. But now it's kind of like we're coming into we we've, we've taken positive experiences from each album, and we have basically found out what works for us in the band. Everything we've done in the past developed who we are now. Right. You know, like like writing with songwriters and, and all that stuff. And we'll still write with a couple of the songwriters that we have really good success with, you know, that, that we really enjoy. But, you know, like working with, we've had a different producer on every album. And I think this last album, we found the guy for us. You know, like bands find that producer that works for that band. And, and I think Joe Barisi is the guy that does that for us. You know, he, he, he just kind of, says do your thing, man. you know, just jam, see what happens, and that's what we need, you know. And was it quicker this time since, you know, this record captures also the live energy of the band, it seems very, you know, spontaneous. This entire record was recorded in about 23 days, I think. Okay, very quick. Yeah. Very quick, yeah. yeah. It's, cut to, it's cut to two inch tape, yeah. too, okay. analog, so it's very different for us. We didn't, in the previous three albums, we worked inside the, the Pro Tools box, so. This album is great getting to record to tape that we, you know, every act we've ever loved, Seth the Cream, you know, and everybody, I mean, they all they didn't have to tape. Yeah, they didn't have Pro Tools. So you weren't in a rush, it simply went, you know. Yeah. Okay. There's mistakes on this album, like oh, things yeah. that were played, especially in my department, things that are, like, the beautiful mistakes, okay. you lose those when you when you go in and you try to cut and make everything perfect with Pro Tools. And that's what is, is is kind of sad about the situation with music now is that, and, and this is it's true, anybody can really be a pop star or a rock star in about 24 hours if you have a great Pro Tools engineer or somebody who can, you know, really cut and paste. And it's like, and the thing is though, when those people go out and play live, they so like, yeah, well, they, they have to, the, uh, they suck, so they have to use like backing tracks. The fire so you're, 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 you're paying for some, and that's, that's another thing we pride ourselves on. It's like if you if you come see a Blackstone Cherry show, the only sounds you're hearing are coming straight off the stage from an amplifier or from a microphone. 
That's, I mean, that, that's Even it. if they're out of key. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they are. You know, I, I would rather people pay money to see us screw our songs up than people pay money to walk, go watch a band, have someone sit behind them with a Pro Tools unit to push play on it. And that happens a lot, you know what I mean? Like, that shit drives me nuts, you know? Like, dude, Leonard Skinner never used no damn Pro Tools rig. You know, what, why? All the classic live albums, you know. Yeah, it was all musicians. Yeah, they're, they're really live. a little bit fixed in the yeah. studio, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not as today, okay. Um, you've been a band for uh, 13, 14 years, yeah. but your schedule in the, lab, in the last four or five years has been non-stop totally. How do you live that? I mean, I mean are you still... Crazy. On top? <laughs> yeah, you know, we're, we're back and better than ever. I mean, we did take a little bit of a break um, at the end of 2012, uh, or in 2011. Yeah, no, 12. Yeah. You don't even remember. <laughs> uh, no. yeah, it, 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 it was 2012. Uh, well, we stopped touring in September of that year, took the rest of the year off. So we had October, November, you know, December off. We had three months. We had never done that. And I think it was the best thing we'd ever done because it let everybody get home and kind of recharge and get back to just being, you know, Chris, John, Fred, Ben and John from Edmonton and Glasgow. And th there was like, you know, all the pressure kind of went away and I got my mind back and, you know, we we uh, we came out the other side of that break, you know, the, the best with the band's ever been. Um, and whose idea was the Southern Hospitality Tour in the UK when you played intimate gigs? with setlist based on fans' requests. Uh, did it turn um, exactly as you expected it to be? And was it that cathartic in a sense for the band? The, those shows were originally, uh, the idea behind that was thought up by our, uh, our booking agent okay. uh, at X-Ray Touring. And um, our management. Yeah, the, the, they, they were the ones that had the idea of doing those four small shows. And then they were like, so how do we make them special? And we and the band, you know, collectively decided, let's do it just like Stone Cherry, no opening bands. We'll play for two hours a night, you know, and then we'll, we'll, we'll let people ask us questions while we're on stage. And the cool thing about it was the fact, like, it, it was kind of hard to hear because we didn't have a microphone out in the crowd, but they weren't submitted questions. People, like, literally, we would just, people would raise their hand and we'd pick somebody and they'd ask the most random questions, you know? Yeah. But th that was what made it so, like, just like us talking right here, you know? And if, if I could have went to a concert when I was a kid and and asked, you know, my favorite bands a question, that would have been awesome. Yeah. You know, and then we decided to do the fan submitted set list. I mean, it was it was great, you know? Luckily for us, it was most of the songs we normally play. And so, you. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, the, the Southern Hospitality Tour, those four shows are some of the most fun I've ever had with Did you learn something new about yourself and your fans during that experience? And is that an experience that you would repeat maybe oh, in yeah. some other countries? Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I, would, I would definitely do it again. And I think the biggest thing I walked away from that was, you know, remembering that I love music. You know what I mean? Like, because like, you know, when you're playing really big shows, it kind of all gets away from just playing music. It's more about putting on a show and 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 interacting with thousands of people. When you break it down to like 1,500 people, yeah. and you can see every single person's facial expression in the room, it, it gets to a whole nother level. You know what I mean? Of of, of intimacy there. And I don't know. Like the, the the coolest thing is like you know we would let the fans ask and then we would ask them. What is it about our band that you all love so much over here? And they said it was just the fact that we're people. We're not like rock stars. We're not. We're just dudes on stage and having fun. Um, actually, my next question is a little bit about what you just said. Um, looking back uh, at your career, which was a kind of roller coaster ride, non-stop, you know, touring and making records for a lot of years. Uh, but when did you exactly realize that you were going, you know, to leave Kentucky and become professional rockers and rock stars in a sense, since you're doing this, uh, you know, full time? And, uh, you know, when we got our record deal in 2005, and we recorded that first album at the end of that year, 
and we got to start touring in 2006 when the record came out. We were kind of like, oh man, you know, we made it. And in a sense, we had because we had gotten a record deal and put out a CD, you know, internationally, and people were buying it, you know. And we had a song that went to number 10 on radio in America. And then in early 2007, we got invited by some friends of ours in a band called Hinder to come over and open up in Europe for them. It was a 27 day tour with like 20 shows. And we came over and just, you know, played some rock and roll, man. You know what I mean? Like, just, just did it the way we do it. And, and people loved it. So we ended up coming back and doing a small headline tour, you know, mainly in the UK. And all the UK shows started selling really, really well. Well, that was in like, you know, they, they have what's called the academies over there. So they got Academy 3, 2, and 1. The Academy 3 is the smallest academy room. It's like 300 capacity someplace. So we did those rooms to sold them out. And when it came time, when our second CD came out, we went back to do another headlining tour. And we went from 300 seat rooms to like 1,500 seat rooms wow. like that. And it was just basically, you know, word of mouth, People, you know, just fell in love with our live show, I guess, you know, and the way we are as a band. And it just continually has kept growing from there. And the first time we came over and played and had a completely sold out tour, you know, there's a thousand seat rooms or whatever, and they sold out in advance, it was kind of like, finally, after, after you know, years and years of, of, after, you know, that was 2008 when that record came out. So after seven years of, of non-stop working, writing, touring, we finally had made an impact on some, some part of the world to where people couldn't get enough of us. And it was... I think that's when we knew that we were gonna be doing this for a long time. Oh yeah, that, like, you know, when we, would, when we developed the fan base in Europe and the UK, that was when we realized we could do this for the rest of our lives. Right. You know what I mean? As long as we keep putting out good records and always deliver live every night. You know, that's the thing. Fans in America are very fickle. Hmm. They're they're very driven by what's on radio. Okay. You know, until you establish like a cult kind of following, right. like Leonard Skinner has, and and and, and Seven Dust and bands that, that we're all friends and fans of. You know, but it's like over here, it's, there, there there are no fair weather fans. Everybody like the fans that like a band over here follow that band through yeah. thick and thin. They're always there for that band. You know what I mean, like. Motorhead. We, we came to do a tour, tour, tour with Motorhead, and, and it was just like a uh, mainly it was all in Germany. Yeah. And, and we did these shows, and it was like six thousand people a night. You know, Motorhead's playing that, and then back home they they play House of Blues, yes. right? They play yes. small clubs. Yeah, the club. You know, it, it just goes to show you that if, if you stick with it and you always deliver and you stay true to what your band is, the fans over here will never leave your side. Well, in America has a lot of more like. Like formats as far as radio, and uh, they want to classify things too much. Yeah, here people come to a concert, and you might see like six different genres of rock. Yeah, and, and, you know, it might be metal. It might be like well, today, classic got, rock. Yes. Yeah. Today, you got Skillet, who are like you know a Christian rock band. You've got us, who are more I guess we'd call a Southern rock band. Yes. Alter Bridge, who are like your new metal kind of guys, and then you've got Opeth, yes. who, who used to do all, like almost death metal kind of stuff. Yes. You know. And then you've got Iron Maiden, who's yeah. possibly one of the you know greatest, longest-lasting metal bands of all time. And you got Extrema, which are yeah. from Italy and yeah. uh, pure heavy metal, so oh, yeah. it's like very cool. So you you share the stage tonight with Maiden and uh, also Alter Bridge, which you shared the stage before quite a few times. Right. Um, among all bands that you toured with in the last ten years, who would you say was your favorite for some reason? Bad Company, when you're scared. With the, the, they did uh, a tour called the 40 Years Anniversary or something, yeah. and <laughs> we did that tour with them in 2013, yeah, last year we did that tour with them, and to be able to walk out on stage, play our songs, and then immediately walk right back around to the side of the stage or walk out front and get to hear two of the bands that influenced us the most. Yeah. Two of the bands that we had pictures of on our walls our whole lives that we used to play their songs, you know, be there playing and singing and doing it as good as they ever have yeah. was just absolutely amazing for me. I went for Def Leppard, it was pretty awesome. We did an arena tour with them in the UK and uh, that's pretty. This is a white Yeah, it was awesome. 
a lot of Motorhead. The Motorhead tour was great. Uh, yeah, I mean, We've been very fortunate. I'm just yeah. I'm partial yeah. to Skinner and Bad Company. Yeah. You actually uh, been defined, you know, Lino Skinner meets the Black Rose with the hint of Zeppelin. Um, does this genuine de description actually fits your roots and influences? I, I think it does to to, okay. a, to a certain degree. My favorite one I've ever heard was. If Leonard Skinner and Fantera had a street fight, we would see what came out of it. <laughs> That's a good you know what I mean? Yeah. And, 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 and you know that one, they all make sense. You know what I mean? The Skinner, Black Rose, that one. But for me, it's like I like the Fantera Skinner one because. You know, we're, we're heavier than Skinner or the Black Rose, or, or even Zeppelin for that matter. You know, we do a lot of drop tune stuff. But, you know, like with the Pantera Skinner thing, they're both Southern bands. They're both, you know, and with Pantera being Southern and super heavy, and Skinner, you know, just being like the most iconic Southern band of all right. time. You know, and, and, and to have Skinner's blessing, you know what I mean? Like the fact that members of Leonard Skinner, you know, Gary Rosington said that Blackstone chose the new torchbearers for Southern Rock. Right. When you hear stuff like that, yeah. I mean, they my arms. I got chills on my arms. Right. That's my favorite band ever, you know what I mean? And to get a, a blessing from those guys to say that we're the next wave of what they do, don't get any better than that for me. So you've been on the cover of Classic Rock Magazine, um, uh, which also dedicated a special compilation to the band, uh, Sony, the Mag. Do you feel you're becoming worldwide rock stars now because of that? Or you just said no, but that is a special goal, especially I mean, think like more people are finding out about us. Yeah, like the, I, I hate the word rock star. Because <laughs> every time I, th I hear the word rock star, I think about an asshole guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like, yeah, it's straight yeah, up with it. You know, like, like we're, we're, I'll say this. Being on the cover of Classic Rock is something that I could have never dreamed of. Something that the four of us, none of us could have ever dreamed of. And we're very fortunate. And I hope that, you know, more people discover our band from that. And obviously it helps us and, and, it, and it makes you realize that you're doing something bigger than what you think you're doing. But we will never call ourselves rock stars. Because, you know, when I think of rock stars, I think of guys that are just mean to people and demanding and Vince Neil like and, All right. you know. Blackstone Cherry is also the name of a variety of cigarettes as you said to me three years ago. Um, are you famous enough now that people think those cigarettes are named after this amazing rock band? Oh no. <laughs> not enough. They're horrible. <laughs> They're not good. Hopefully no one ever smokes those. Because okay. they taste like dog shit. They're really okay. bad. <laughs> Okay, so what's in the plans at the moment for you guys? The, the new uh, album is just came out. Yeah, so. the, the new album's out. We're over here doing the festivals, and uh, we're coming back in the fall. You know, we're going to come back and do a full headlining tour in the fall, and uh, yeah, I'm super excited. Can't wait. Okay, so thanks very much, Thank guys. You. See you soon. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Hey, thanks Thank you. a lot. Thank you. Thank you.